I've always been the kind of girl that hid in my face So afraid to tell the world what I've got to say But I have this dream right inside of me I'm gonna let it show It's time to let you know To let you know This is real to kind of do an early morning you know get to know me kind of thing so yeah I have um, my grocery bag on my head because I am not bougie and when I was growing up we never had even just shower caps it wasn't something that was in the house but we did have a plastic grocery bag so I keep traditions anyways I am conditioning my hair this morning and so I'm going to keep this in for as long as I can to soak up all the moisture I can. When you live in a cold climate and you're brown, the things your hair and skin go through just to stay moisturized. So I spend a ton of money trying to get the right conditioners, coconut oils, you know how it goes. So I just wanted to kind of talk about why I initially moved to Minnesota why I moved back to Minnesota. So I was raised in Minnesota as a little girl for a long time. Went through hell and back growing up. Um, and when I got married for a second time, my husband, his family was never from here. They were from the South. And my extended family initially is from the South. So we thought we would love to move to warmer weather. So that's exactly what we did. And uh, we moved to Texas at first. Love the people there. I swear, Texas is a one of a kind place. The people are so friendly. But where we lived, uh, it just wasn't for us. So we ended up moving to Florida. Florida was amazing. I feel like everybody has that place somewhere in the world that you just feel like it's home. Do you know what I mean? Um, where you just feel like you have this connection to it. I don't know how to explain it, but Florida was that for me. It was so tropical, and yes, it was humid, but the hair in the skin thrived, honey. So I would put on some coconut oil or some lotion. It would last for most of the day. It was amazing. That is where my skin belongs. This is how I know. I am a beautiful African woman who belongs in a tropical climate. <laughs> so anyways, um, but while we were there, my husband at the time got re-diagnosed with cancer. He is a second time, um, well I guess he got diagnosed for a second time. He was a survivor and in remission for about five and a half years before he was re-diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. We had just had our baby together. I had two of my own, so that was my third. At first, I said I wasn't sure if I wanted to have a baby because of the risk of him possibly getting cancer again, but he said something to me that always stuck with me, and he said, any one of us at any time could get cancer. Um, any one of us at any time could die in a car accident. So do we live our lives every day worried that we could die and so we don't have any children or do you live your life for now and hope for the best and try to be smart so hearing that and hearing how much he really wanted a child I decided um, I wanted one with him as well so we tried for our third or my third and uh, we had a beautiful baby girl and within a few months of her being born my worst nightmare came to fruition. So he was re-diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and had to go through chemotherapy. Now for those of you that don't know what chemotherapy is, it's basically administered as an IV drip in the arm. Um, they give different cocktails to each person and each different type of cancer as far as I know. Um, 
And so the kind that he was given, uh, I think it was a Rituxan, it started to react really badly with him. He started to get um, skin rashes really badly, so much so where it was kind of eating the palm of his hand. They couldn't figure out what it was, saw multiple dermatologists. He was in and out of the hospital for infections of the skin um, because you have no immune system when you go through chemotherapy. It's basically like a poison. Um, the plan is to kill the cancer before it kills you, but in turn it weakens your body and kills you as well. So going through in and out of the hospital, there was a time when he almost died. Um, the stress on me as the person working and taking care of most of everything was really high. I felt it wasn't fair for him to go to the hospital and I have to drop him off because I had to get back home to go to work. Um, I didn't feel that it was necessarily fair that I would have to be home taking care of the kids because that's what you do when you have children. But he would be at the hospital for days alone. Um, there was times I had to work and I would try to bring him to his appointments or try to take time off of work. But you know how it is, you can only take so much time off of work. And so um, we would call his parents, which by the way are racist and hate me for no reason. That's another story. But anyways, um, we would call them and I would be so welcoming to them. I would make sure there was fresh flowers in my guest room, I'd make sure there was new sheets. Um, tried to be as, as accommodating as I could because I appreciated them coming into town to be with him when I could not be. And, um, you know, whatever issues they had or whatever issues we had in the past, I felt like it didn't matter because he's sick. So we had to focus on that. Um, but then my world came crashing. I found out later that... Um, he actually was relapsing um, with cocaine. Now, that was something I had heard that he did before he met me and was told that he had stopped. And when I found out, you know, um, the stress of all this was taking a toll on him, um, but I didn't realize the amount of drugs and alcohol he was doing to self-medicate. On one hand, I can kind of understand the feeling of helplessness, being scared, stressed, and just wanting to forget your problems. On the other hand, I felt like we have a family to take care of and doing certain irresponsible things, which I won't really talk about completely in detail, but um, there were things that he did that put everything in jeopardy everything um, so I had to do what I felt was best and responsible um, I decided to buy a house in Minnesota where I'm from so um, moving here I always thought that eventually he would clean up his life and maybe move in with us but Again, like I said, his parents never liked the idea of us being together, so they basically blackmailed him at a time when we needed him um, to make sure that he would leave. But at the end of the day, you know, that's his choice. So um, he stayed in Florida for a while, and we decided to move on. Now, hold on a second. I am going to rinse this out, put on my face a little bit, we'll get ready together, okay? Hold on. So where was I? Okay, so now I have put in my little rollers. Um, I don't like to use a lot of heat and I'm kind of being more natural with my hair as much as possible. I'm not like hardcore natural natural, but um, just try not to use as much chemicals as I possibly can and um, to just not put a lot of heat on my hair let it grow because this climate again is so dry gotta do what I can do so put these in and then I'm just gonna wrap it up so hold on a second
Okay, so I'm gonna look like this for a little bit while I put my makeup on. Kinda like this look. You guys are probably like, what in the world she have on her head? But um, I'm kinda liking it. I feel kind of uh, a little bit Erica Badu kind of vibes. Latino shade. So to get back to the story, as I was saying, Okay, whatever. Let me use black opal. It's called Beautiful Bronze, I believe. I put a little on here, and I am not a makeup guru. Never try to be in any way. So you can critique me all day long about the way I do things. Well, this is how I do it. So as I was saying, um, he had some issues with the drug and alcohol after being re-diagnosed. Ooh, that's a lot. Um, and he was doing some questionable things, including possible infidelity type of things. Uh, we won't go into that. Nothing has been confirmed, but you know how it feels, girls, when you find evidence and you know, you know. You know what I mean? You know. So, um, just a lot of stuff going on. We were going through it. And I decided to go back to what I knew, which was Minnesota. It was a safe place. Um, I'm familiar with it. I'm familiar with the neighborhood, the housing market. And I was ready to buy a house and just kind of settle a little bit with the kids. Give them some sense of stability. So that's what I did. I flew home, got a job, temporary job for the moment. I got in a job, applied to get a home, and I had my own house. I was living here by myself, I was depressed. Depressed because I said I would never come back to Minnesota. It was cold, it was winter time. I believe at the time it was like negative 30 at the time. Just insane. I was actually genuinely angry, like who would want to live here? This is crazy. Then I had to look and think, mm, you chose to live here, girl, so <laughs> deal with it. This is Minnesota. And so um, then um, we were done. We had filed for divorce. I met someone at the time. We won't give him any names. We'll call him Frenchie because he was from France. So um, Frenchie and I met actually um, on a dating site. And I was just wanting a good friend to kind of go out with and hang out with. Cause you know, when you're at home and you take care of the kids all day, while well, I was working, but you know what I mean? You go to work, you get home, you take care of the kids. You kind of want some adult conversation. Hold on a minute. This needs to be sharpened. I do not know what's going on with this camera. Every time I put it down, it acts to be in full. So, anyways, I threw it with this camera, girl. Drop the makeup and stuff. This is crazy. This is as good as this one get. So, um, as I was saying, I um, decided to move back here and met Frenchie because I just really wanted some adult company, you know? It wasn't even about running into another relationship, which, mind your business, this is my channel, my story. <laughs> People always got something to say, but it wasn't necessarily about running into the arms of someone else. It was just the fact that, you know, you get home from work, you want somebody to talk to. You want to go to dinner, you want to go to a movie, you want to just have some fun, you know? And that's basically what I was looking for, and I was very honest about it. He understood, and he was very supportive over everything I was going through and the transitions I was making, um, being alone again, and um, I was very independent, and he is too, so it worked out really well. We were really good friends for a long time. But yes, that was the story of why I moved to Minnesota. Um, my brows look all right. Looks mm -hmm. good. You can tell I'm not used to this getting ready with me kind of thing. This is this is tough. 
And next thing I'm gonna do is some black opal concealer I have. It's about two shades lighter than I got my um, foundation in. So, here we go. So initially, I had a good time while I was here, you know? Um, met someone, just having a good time, for just being, just having fun. And that worked out fun and dandy. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you realize somebody is not for you, and that they are a better friend than they would be a partner, and sometimes that's just the way it is, you know? And I am quick to move on. Ooh, look crazy, huh? This is how it works. I am quick to move on in a sense that, can you see this? Can you see it? Cool. So I'm quick to move on in a sense that, look, I pay my own bills. I feel like if somebody's not treating you the way you need to be treated or the way you deserve to be treated, it's time to move on. Whether that means being alone, or whether that means moving on in another relationship, I mean, your pick. I feel like it's cliche to say, oh, you need some time alone, you know, think to yourself. And it's true to a point. There is nothing wrong with being by yourself. But there's also nothing wrong with finding somebody who loves you. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's built for the life of being alone for 10 plus years. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. How's this going? I'm getting there. Getting there, getting there, getting there. So, what do you think? I know the lighting's not best in this bathroom. I'm gonna eventually get some better lighting, but. For now, this is gonna have to work. So yeah, if you know somebody is not for you, they don't wanna do the things you wanna do, and that's fine. We don't always wanna do what everybody wants to do, but when they're not treating you right, have some self-esteem. People may talk about me because I move on in a minute. And I don't move on for just anything. I mean, if somebody coughs the wrong way, they don't like the things you like, maybe they irritate the hell out of you, the breath stinks and more, you know, there's a lot of things. But I don't leave for simple things like that. It's gotta be something that affects my kids first and foremost because I put them before myself. If it's gonna hurt me, I'm okay. But if it's my kids that are gonna be affected in the long run, you gotta go. You got to go. So if it's my kids, I don't play around. But beyond my kids, that also comes with me being happy. You know, if I'm happy, my kids are generally happy. And I don't wanna put them in situations where they feel that I'm not happy. I also have a little highlighter here from Black Opal. I really like Black Opal. I feel like they came with a variety of shades for me. I'll put that little hot out of cream on, honey. I got a cream, get that cheekbone in there. <laughs> so, I'm gonna blend that one out. And see, I was raised in a home where I watched my mother get beat. I watch her go back to the same dude over and over again, my father, who was a drug addict, who was in and out of prison consistently. And she did that, I believe, because she kind of always put herself on this, um, I don't know, I think it was more of the fact she just wanted to make sure she had kids with the same dude, which to me is ridiculous, trying to stick it out uh, 
just because you had a child with them and trying to have more kids because you want more kids, but you want to make sure it's for the same with the same guy, that's ridiculous to me. Why put more kids in a situation that you know is bad? Why keep a child in a situation that you know is bad? It's not doing anything for the kid. I hate when people say, oh, I'm doing it for my child. Girl, excuse it, okay? You're doing it for yourself because you can't say goodbye. Because you can't say goodbye, you wanna pretend it's for the kids. And maybe partially it is, you know? I'm not gonna judge everybody, but I think a lot of that mess is because they can't and don't wanna be without them. They're scared of the stigmas that come behind it. And that's ridiculous to me. I'm putting a little blush on. I like to use this one, as you can see. It's a little more out. I'm gonna put a little bit here, a little bit here. Like I said, I'm no beauty guru, so um, <laughs> it is what it is. Next, I think I'm gonna use some of this. Now, I don't judge now. We don't judge, right? I do use Wet n Wild because it's cheap. I'm not trying to spend $80 on a, a palette, but I, I do understand the differences. Um, there are some amazing eyeshadows and palettes out there where it stays, it's laid, it's bright, it's bold, the pigments are beautiful, but I don't wear makeup all day like that. I wear it for a few hours, and that's it. So I'm fine with doing cheap stuff. So again, I have a Wet n Wild pack. I think today, um, I feel a little gold. Maybe go with my earrings and to offset this black hair kaba do. <laughs> All right. So, um, growing up like that, I always thought I want my kids to be raised in a home completely opposite of the way I was raised. You know, you always want to try to do better than your parents did. You know, your parents did what they could with what they knew. And uh, that's what I try to do. But when things don't go well, guess what? I move around. I take care of me. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if your relationship is amazing. You should always be able to take care of yourself because you never know if your spouse is gonna get sick and die, God forbid, get in an accident, get sick, or I mean, get in an accident and die, God forbid. But there may be a day when you won't always be a kempt person or someone with two incomes. So you should always be independent enough, and this is what I'm gonna tell my kids, always be independent enough that if something went down, somebody lost a job, whatever the case may be, they may leave you, that you can still take care of you and yours, you know? And that's what I've always done. I've always been able to take care of me and my children. So I moved here, bought a house, and I said I was gonna stay for five years. However, um, it's not gonna be the case. I can't stand the cold here. My ex, or filed X, whatever you want to say, it's complicated, um, decided to eventually move here to be closer to the kids. He is a great father when he is sober and in his right mind, he is one of the best fathers ever. So he decided to move here to be closer to the kids. How do you like it? I don't know, it looks pretty good to me. Again, no tea, no shade. Okay, I don't want to hear it. I'm not a makeup guru. I said that a million times. <laughs> so, anyways, um, he moved here to be with the kids, and we've been getting along. He went through a rehab program, so he's been sober, still battling cancer, and that's a roller coaster for us as a family. Um, I wouldn't say we're back together because I feel like he has a lot of growing to do on his own as well as I. Um, before anybody even gets to that point again. I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm back and forth. It is too taxing on me and the kids. So, um, 
For now, we're just doing a great job co-parenting. But we have both decided that we hate the weather here. And you know, have you ever been home again someplace and you feel like all the great memories you had, things aren't necessarily the way you remember it anymore? People grow, they move, they change. Even businesses and cities grow, move, and change. So, you know, um, Minnesota will always have, it'll always be home, you know? I'm gonna use this darker color. It has a darker sparkle at the top. It'll always be home. But at the end of the day, things have changed, we've changed. I feel like I've outgrown um, the city. Now, I'm never, I will always be a Midwest girl at heart. I never feel that I'm too good to live here or too good for anything here. But I think sometimes when you move on and you move to other places and you see other people, and you realize you can do it. You absolutely can do it. It's scary at first, but any place can be home. And at the end of the day, it's still the United States. It's not like we're moving to another country. You know, we just moved a little bit farther. So um, doing that and coming back, I just feel like a lot of things change, but a lot of things are still the same, if you know what I mean. There's some people still going through the same things, the same things, and I'm trying to move and grow. So I decided the best thing to do is to go visit some places um, and do tons of research with schools and everything to find out where's the best place to live. I won't reveal, reveal that yet. Um, over the next few months, you will see different locations that we go visit and those are the places that are in consideration. I'm not sure if it's gonna happen yet, but um, my, soon, you know, Trevor, you saw him in the intro video, so I'll just say it, Trevor. <laughs> he decided he was gonna move um, at the same time we do, wherever we move, so that he can be close to the kids. Again, like I said, a great father. So, we are kind of looking at places that we could live, the kids could thrive, and we could co-parent very well. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do with this place, since I do own it now, um, rent is insane here in Minnesota. And I would like to be able to rent out this place. Yes, I just use a pencil. Uh, I have a liquid liner, but it's dried up now. Um, like I said, I don't wear makeup every day. I like wearing it, and the more I do it, I think it's, it's more fun. But I ain't got the money for all that. And I've got kids. It can sometimes be a work just to get on. How do you like the eye? I didn't have the eyes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, hold on a minute. Let me see so you can see the finished look now. Didn't even put mascara on today. Whew. Okay, go on through it, honey. So there's my look. Yeah, this place is beautiful. It's been completely remodeled and it's in a cute, trendy area that right now rent is crazy and I feel like I'm just gonna rent it out. Um, so that I always have a place to come back to. I might even Airbnb, but I wish there were more businesses out there that helped you turn your Airbnb when you're not in town. That's an idea for somebody. Whoever's gonna think of that idea is gonna be rich. So, yeah, for the meantime though, we're here living life and we'll probably be moving next year. Yeah, next year. So anyways, thank you for getting ready with me this morning. I do have to get to work now. Yeah, I will see you soon. 
If you like this video, don't forget to like and share. And for more video content like this, subscribe. Bye.